Um, I work under the name Studio Lenka. Um, I really like that name because a studio can be a lot of different things. Um, it could be a dance studio, it could be a studio for painting, it could be a fashion studio. And often my, my practice kind of changes. Um, so I don't like to just do one thing, I like to do a whole bunch of different things. But today uh, I'm gonna focus on a painting that I made, um, which is behind me, you can see it there with the two figures. Um, and it's called Loras. Oh, I forgot to say why I'm called Studio Lenka. Lenka is actually the name of, of my ancestors from the country that I was born in, um, which is El Salvador. And it's a very small country in Central America. And um, often the only thing that the public hears about the country are sort of things to do around violence um, and things to do around immigration. Um, so what I like to do with my work is try to sort of show different sides to that culture. Um, so the painting behind me is called Loras and that's actually a Spanish word for parrots. Um, parrots like the birds, like parakeets and, and different sort of tropical birds. Um, I, I made it about two years ago and it's essentially two men um, sort of hanging out in, in a jungle surrounded by these birds. And um, the birds are kind of um, the pattern that make up their hats and the pattern that make up their clothing. Um, so let's get started. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna show you the different materials that I have. So today I'm gonna to be working on A3 paper. Um, you can work on A4 paper, or you could work larger if you wish. Um, I'm just working uh, in a landscape orientation. So it goes across like this. Um, we have coloring pencils. So I just have a whole bunch of different coloring pencils. Um, I have the pictures of the birds. I have oil pastels. Um, we're only going to need a dark color, but I just have a, a little jar of them. And you can also use carbon paper. So you can you can do this. Uh, you can make the artwork with oil pastels or carbon paper. You don't have to have both. Um, but I just wanted to show you the two different techniques. I also have some paint that's been lying around in my studio. Um, and I have different size brushes, okay, just to make different marks later on. And then lastly, um, I have a pen, um, but you can also use a pencil as well. Okay, so some of you might actually have um, the picture in front of you but I thought it would be nice for me to draw it out so that you could see how I made the picture. So we're gonna draw two figures. Um, and you might, like I said, already have the picture. So you, you might not have to do this step. But with my paintings, I often work really large. And what I like to do is, is I like to sort of, um, I like to have two figures. Because I think when you have two figures side by side, they sort of tell a story. And I really like that. So I'm just starting off with the head there. I always just sort of like make this U shape and I, and I give them little ears. And then I just give them some eyes. I give them a little nose. So you might be making your own or you might already have this printed out for you. Give them some hair, okay. And then I create their bodies, which are these sort of big shapes. And the reason I like to um, sort of have this big shape is 
because actually I really like to fill it up with pattern and color. And then I always do a giant hat as well. Now, the reason for these um, figures and, and the way that they're dressed is actually, these, these are based on um, a, like a folkloric dancer from my country. Um, so they're kind of inspired by them. They always wear these beautiful costumes and they always have um, big hats on as well. So I'm just gonna draw the second figure. Okay, so we have the two figures like that. Um, Jen, I hope everything's fine. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, yeah, I just, I hope everything is fine with the sound and stuff, I'm not sure. Okay, so now we're actually gonna color in the faces. And um, when I do faces, I always like to use patches of color. And I usually stick to oranges and browns and, and yellows and pinks and reds as well. So I'm just gonna pick out some of those colors. So I have brown, red. I'm gonna choose an orange there. This light brown is nice. Just whatever you have. You don't have to have a giant range. I'm just using what I have here. And I think the reason why I sort of use these colors is because I like to include lots of different types of skin color. Um, because in, in Central America, there's a lot of different type of types of skin color. Um, so I think that's kind of why I've always done that. Um, so you're just going to start to add color um, to the face. And I kind of like to go around uh, the details. So I'm just sort of curving around the eye. So I've just done those little patches there. And then I'll just sort of switch. Um, I often use red on the cheeks. So I'm giving him rosy cheeks. There's no right or wrong. What's really nice about these figures is that they're from my imagination. Um, so it's not about getting the proportions right or, or anything like that. So I'm just adding color, just switching up the coloring pencils. I always think of it as a sort of uh, like a patchwork quilt, which sounds, uh, I don't know, strange, I guess, but it, it's just like a, a patchwork of color on, on the face. And I'm sort of working in a sort of uh, circular motion. And I'm, I'm not pressing down too hard, I'm sort of, allowing the colors to sort of blend uh, together. But I still want to see um, that they're different colors. So I'm not worried about um, making it all one sort of consistent color.
And when I'm working with paint on a large canvas, I work exactly the same. So I just do it bit by bit. Okay, so that's the first face done. Um, I'm gonna do the second one now. And it's exactly the same. I really like working with these figures because they sort of have their own personalities. So when you start to add color to them, and when you start to add the details, um, they sort of take on their own personas. And um, yeah, they, they, that, that really interests me, the way that the, that the figure sort of emerges with the personality. Jose, just to let you know, we have had 10 minutes of the workshop already today. Thank you. Okay. So you can see how I'm sort of holding all of my pencils. Uh, I'm not being too precious about it. I ju I'm just sort of randomly choosing colors. Because I've selected um, the, the colors already, I don't really have to think about it too much. I just kind of let them randomly appear in my other hand. And that sort of, yeah, just makes its way onto the figure really. Okay, so I'm just going to add a few more details, maybe with a darker brown or a black, just on the ears, just to get some details in there. I'll use black. Just the inside of the ear. I also like doing um, eyebrows. So I'll give this little guy some eyebrows by just drawing these little lines. Um, and I will also give them a bit more hair. So just um, drawing some wavy lines here. Sometimes I give them little curls like that. Okay. Great. So we have the figures and we have the, the, the faces colored in with coloring pencils. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to add the detail into the, the bodies of the figure. So there's two ways of doing this. Um, the first way I'll show you is the, the one with the oil pastel. So for this, you're gonna need a dark oil pastel I recommend using a dark blue or a dark black. I'm just peeling off the end of the paper there so that I can use the tip of the oil pastel. Okay. And the next thing you're gonna do, um, is you're gonna take your bird. I've just cut it out, um, but also if you're working with the sheet, that's absolutely fine. You can just sort of um, look on the back and kind of see through the paper. 
and um, see the, the bird. And what you're going to do is you're actually going to coat the back of the image with oil pastels. So I'm just going to color this in. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to do it lightly. So if you can see the difference between applying the oil pastel lightly there and a sort of um, heavier, more pressure um, application there. So there's a difference between this and this. We want this, okay? We want it to be quite dark and quite heavy. And it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? We're just coating the back of the picture. We're essentially making a monoprint, which means uh, one print, really. You can do this on your table, away, away from the figures if you don't want to get anything on the figures. Jose, while you're coloring that in, we've had a really lovely comment come through from Oliver Herbert, who says, it's amazing how quickly they come to life. So beautiful. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. Okay, so that's the back of the bird, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna print um, the bird onto the body of the figure. So you can see there that the bird is actually going off the page, that's absolutely fine. Um, what you're gonna do is you're going to use a pencil or a pen to trace the, the lines of the, of the image. You can probably hear some seagulls because I'm in Margate. Um, so that's what that sound is, but those are, those are seagulls. Um, and so you're gonna take your pen or your pencil and you're just going to make sure that the image isn't moving around whilst you're tracing it. So I just sort of use two fingers to hold the image down. So I'm just tracing over the lines. And you can really take your time with this or you can do this quite quickly. It's completely up to you and your style. I sort of do an in-between. So I try and get the general shape of the bird and then quickly add in some details. And you'll notice that I'm starting from the top of the bird and sort of working my way down just to make sure that I'm getting as much of it as possible. Jose, we've had a really lovely comment come through from Kathy, who says, I really appreciate how you explain what you're doing and why. I'm learning so much about how to teach effectively online. Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much. Just to let Jose and everyone know that we are 20 minutes through today's workshop. Thank you. Okay. So one of my favorite things about this process is that you, you might notice that I haven't lifted the bird. So there's a real surprise at the end when you finally lift the bird. 
And sometimes, to be honest, it actually doesn't turn out well. Um, and that's absolutely fine. That's part of the, the mono printing process, I think, is that sort of element of surprise. And you kind of have to let go. Um, sometimes I know that's hard um, when, we're, when we're making art, um, but it, it kind of sort of teaches us something about ourselves, I think. Okay, so hopefully it's worked out. <laughs> Let's have a look. Okay, so I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So you can see that the oil pastel has come through where we've um, traced the lines. Um, so, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just quickly try and fill some more of this space up. And I'm just randomly gonna choose some birds to put into the figures. And you can repeat the birds, it's completely up to you. I'm gonna put it on their costume and I'll also put, put the birds into their hats as well. But this time, if you're working with carbon paper and you can get carbon paper at any sort of stationary shot. Um, if you're working with carbon paper, you just place the carbon paper down and then put the image on top and then trace the image just as, as we did. So instead of having oil pastel on the back, you're using the carbon paper to make the print. Okay, give it a go. I always think that the, the beak and the eyes are really important. And then I sort of improvise or make up some of the feathers. So we've also got some hellos uh, as always in today's workshop. Big hello to everyone joining us from ES1 board at the Maudsley, that's to Robert and all the team there. And a big hi to Snowsfield's adolescent unit who I know will be watching this back on demand. If you'd like to let us know where you're joining us from today, you can do so using the Q&A function or in the chat box. So let's see how that one's turned out. Really nice. I really like um, the sort of movement of this parrot. Um, it looks like it's in mid flight. So when you, when you start to add more, you, you can think about the composition. Um, so, so you can sort of, it's almost like a puzzle. Maybe I'll put this parrot here just to fill that space. Um, and then maybe another bird there to fill that space. So you start to, it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle. You start to compose it and, and think what looks nice to you. I'm just checking that that's the right spot there, roughly. One of my favorite things um, as an artist is to work with different people. I, um, I'm a teacher as well. And I find the work I do with my students uh, inspires the work I do in my studio. So it's kind of like a, a dialogue. We sort of work together.
So it's really nice to be working with all of you today as well. Jose, we've got an incredible audience with us today. We've got Kathy, who's joining us from Vermont in the USA. Marie, oh, wow. one in Hartford House in Solly Hill in the West Midlands. And we've also got Denisa joining us from London. Such a nice range of places. We've also got Oliver joining us from Dubai. I know that you've kind of had some work happening in Dubai recently, Jose. Oh yes, I've been I've been painting in Dubai. That's a very nice place. Let's have a look. Okay, and um, these these kind of scribbly marks, you know, it, it's not a perfect copy of this bird but it gives the bird a sort of character. So the, the lines, the scribbly lines give this bird a little bit more character, I think. So I'm, I've, I've spent a, a bit of time on these birds um, and I've, I've put a lot of detail. I'm gonna work a little bit faster and more uh, sort of abstract. So they're gonna be a bit more scribbly. And that's absolutely fine. Just as a time check for everyone, we are 30 minutes through today's workshop. Okay, and then I'll do uh, some birds on the head there, on the hat, sorry. I often use this, um, these printing techniques with students. Um, and sometimes the students are a bit, um, they're not so confident about drawing. So this is a really great way for someone that uh, isn't maybe very confident with their drawing to just try things out. Because drawing can be a lot of things. It, it doesn't just mean drawing a realistic picture. You know, it's experimenting with line, textures, different mark making. I quite like that. And I went over his face a little bit there, but that's absolutely fine. So you can see the figure starting to fill up. You can take as much time with it as you'd like. Um, but I'm just sort of working quite quickly just so we can add the grass element in the back. And Jose, if people wanted to work on a different color that wasn't kind of a white base, um, how would it be best to do that? Can they color the um, the clothing in, in like a perhaps a pen or a watercolor and then the monoprinting still work on top of that? Yes, absolutely. So um, you could add maybe like a, co like a, a coloring pencil. You could um, add a very light um, watercolor wash, let it dry and then work on top of it with the, the printing techniques. That's absolutely fine. So originally I chose um, 
these exotic birds because they reminded me of El Salvador. And um, I always think that um, we all have something in us, like different stories. And these birds are kind of inside of these figures. And I guess in a way, it's kind of like the culture inside of me, if that makes any sense. Oh, I quite like that one. He looks a bit tired or something. <laughs> and it's fine to repeat. I really like repetition um, because it, it starts to create like an interesting pattern, I always think. So I, I'm kind of moving my, my pen and I, I'm kind of doing squiggly marks, scratchy marks, whatever I feel really. And it's almost like the pen or the pencil is dancing on the paper. It kind of doesn't stop. It has a real energy to it. Ooh, I forgot to do his little feathered head. There we go. And then I'll just add one more detail in there. A time check for everyone that is doing the workshop with us today. We've got 10 minutes remaining. A recording of this workshop will be going up on our YouTube channel by late this afternoon. So if you'd like to revisit it or take a bit more time adding to your works, please do so. Okay. Right. So I'm going to start to add the background um, because in the original painting, these two figures are sat in the jungle. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use uh, just paint. Um, this, this is um, just old paint that's been lying around in my studio that I, that I had covered. Um, and I'm using a variety of different brushes. Um, so that we get a variety of different marks. So I'm, I'm going to really focus on using greens and blues, and I'm just going to do little strokes like this. If you don't have paint, you could even use oil pastels. I'm just trying to fill the, the, the white space behind them um, with as many marks as I can. So I'm, I'm first working with this green color. And then you can sort of mix in yellows and oranges. Um, I have some pink on my palette here, some white, whatever you have really. And you can use different size brushes as well. So I'll just use this one now. I really like the chaos 
of these um, brush marks compared to the sort of detailed um, illustrations within the figures. So it gives it a real contrast. It's not all wild, like the green uh, jungle. It's, it's also detailed um, as well. And I'm not being precious about applying the paint at all. I think the more movement you have in it, the better actually. Because then you get a really sort of organic quality. And it's okay for some of the brush marks to go in front of the figures, um, just so it makes it look like they're sitting amongst um, these leaves and these vines and these trees. Okay, and the very last thing, a, a detail that I really like in the original painting is with a red coloring pencil, I'm just gonna add a beaded necklace. And this is really important because um, in my culture, these red beads help to ward away any evil spirits. Um, so that's kind of a tradition in El Salvador. So I'm just going to draw some beads in red and then the piece will be finished. Oh no, it broke. Pressing too hard, I'll use this one. Okay, I think that looks pretty wild, but um, pretty good. Um, it really captures the spirit of the original paintings, uh, painting Loras. Um, and you can always go back and just add more details if you want as well. Amazing. Thank you very much. That's an absolutely incredible piece, Jose. And thank you so much for telling us more about your culture and the inspiration and context behind your work. Um, I think, you know, if people want to have a look at your website and your social media channels, they'll learn a lot more about your background as an artist and your practice as well. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, thank you to everyone that's let us know where you've been joining us from. It's always so brilliant to have you all with us live. It's time to launch our end of workshop poll. If you could end, indicate on the screen how you found the workshop today, this will really help us to improve the digital art school as we continue to grow and develop our new terms. So this should be popping up on your screens now and we'll let that th run through to the end of the session today. Thanks so much for answering that everyone. Richard, if we can please have our slideshow. 
fantastic. Thanks, Richard. So if you're still here with us today, I'd really like to share the story of hospital rooms and how the workshop today has come about. So we are a London-based arts and mental health charity and we transform inpatient NHS mental health units with extraordinary art. We began the digital art school in response to COVID-19 lockdowns when our in-person work in mental health units was put on hold. It's been hugely important for us to build a community where we can join together globally and feel part of something special, impacting our creative well-being in a positive way. You can find the library of our past projects and all of the previous digital art school workshops on our YouTube channel, where you'll find a variety of original and creative workshops with world-class artists. From collage to illustration, painting and so much more, please do have a look and subscribe to our channel. We also have a digital art school newsletter which keeps you informed of upcoming workshops, the materials you'll need for them along with any relevant downloads and links to last week's video if you missed it or you'd like a recap. You can sign up for that at hospital-rooms.com. We absolutely love when you share your artworks with us by uploading to our online gallery. You can do so anonymously or you can let us know your name and where you are. If you've created a version of Loras today, either joining us live or watching back on demand, we'd really love to see them. We will be back next week on Thursday at 2 p.m. for a workshop with artist Charlie Peters for a collage workshop entitled Inspiration Remix. From myself and everyone on the Hospital Rooms team, thank you all so much for joining us today and another big thank you once again to Studio Lenka for leading today's fantastic workshop. We'll see you all again on Thursday the 25th of November at 2pm. Thank you so much everyone. <laughs>